All right, so I wanted to give a quick um, introduction to Jibberwocky for Max. And this is one of a family of Jibberwockies. Um, they're all essentially live coding environments that run in the browser for talking to uh, other software such as Ableton Live, uh, arbitrary mini devices, or in this case, Max MSP. And uh, you can grab Jibberwocky from the package manager that's built into Max. And once you've got it, essentially uh, any old patcher that you're working on, like uh, this Pulsar uh, synth that I've been working on, um, you can then start to uh, modulate uh, simply by dropping in a Jibberwocky object uh, into the patcher. And in the, on the browser side, uh, you can either open up an editor from that Jibberwocky object, or you can just go to Jibberwocky CC uh, slash Max. And here's some demo code that I'm just going to get rid of for a second. Uh, and you can see it's trying to connect. So uh, here I go. I'm going to create my Jibberwocky object. And as soon as I create it, um, it tells me over here in the browser that Jibberwocky yay, is ready to verbal. <coughs> So the Jibberwocky object itself has got one uh, message outlet uh, for um, uh, sending sequence sequence messages from the browser, and then everything else is going to be uh, an audio output. And you get four of these audio outputs by default. We can change that by adding a signals uh, attribute. So if I say, uh, OK, I'm going to have two signals. Um, or you can have as much as 32 if you want. For doing different kinds of uh, signal-based modulations in your patcher. Uh, we'll get back to that. So what's happened is every time I saved my patcher it's telling me that the max scene is updated um, and there is a little bit of code inside of Jibberwocky which will then uh, explore your patcher and snoop around, find uh, anything that it can that seems like it could be modulated or addressed and throw this into um, its definition of the scene. So in this case, it knows that it's got two signal outlets. It found uh, these two uh, live UI, the, the main gain and also my, uh, my named pitch. And that's about it. It didn't find any namespaces. Um, namespaces we can, we can get simply by hooking up uh, some object like a, a root, for example. So it's a little bit like how you would handle messages from, a, from an OSC. Uh, object or something, you then want to route the message according to its uh, its address or its its kind of first symbol uh, header. So I, if I root pulse, then over here, pulse has now appeared in my namespaces, and you can root a bunch of different stuff, and you can also select uh, stuff uh, like that, or you can root pass. Um, uh, things like that, and you can chain them or have multiple things hooked up to that outlet. Whenever I save, all of these names are going to appear uh, over here in my scene as things that I can now send messages directly to. So essentially I can send messages to all of these different distinct outlets. Um, for now I only really care about this one. I'm just going to get rid of this stuff and I'm going to use this to uh, trigger some of the sounds in my synth. This is what my synth sounds like. It's got a pitch control. It's got, a, it's got a pulse width uh, it's a, as a signal input. It's got a, a, a vibrato over here, uh, which is currently just this uh, 5 hertz uh, sine wave. Yeah, so I'm going to replace my, my button over here with uh, messages coming from the browser. Now, why would I want to do this? Um, oh, it might be that... Uh, I feel more comfortable uh, sketching up a few ideas uh, in, in, in text. Uh, I want to make use of some of uh, Jibberwocky's various different um, uh, utilities for creating sequences and, uh, and other kinds of modulations. Uh, for example, simplest kind of thing is to uh, sequence uh, one of these things, sequence the namespace in this, end. In this case. I'm going to say send a message one and send it every quarter note just like that. And that's going to start the synth actually playing. But essentially by sending this uh, this one message down here um, on every beat. 
And you can see that this is uh, synchronized over here to uh, the transport. It's also got this lovely uh, uh, visual annotation of the, the current beat uh, wrapped around the, the code. Um, it's synchronized to the tempo like this, so if I slow it down, it's going to slow down in the same way. Um, yeah, but this is not the most interesting pattern, obviously. Um, one of the nice things is, instead of putting just a single value, uh, we can put in uh, a pattern like this. Um, and it's going to say basically alternate between sending 0.5 and sending 0.1. And we can even create a pattern, pattern for the timing. So I'm going to say uh, start with uh, uh, an eighth and then a quarter and then an eighth. And that's going to be the timing for my pattern. And control enter will trigger the line and off it goes. Let's replace the uh, previous pattern because I didn't name this one. And you can see that the each one of these, the, the timings pattern is rotating around uh, the, the values that I gave it using the values as uh, the amount of time to wait. And over here, the values pattern um, is also alternating according to these timings. Uh, but this means because I've got three against two, uh, the actual pattern is uh, is uh, a little less trivial. Okay, so now I'm going to pull in uh, my pitch and I'm going to sequence up some values to that. Uh, I don't know, something like that. Those are the MIDI note numbers, and this time I'm just going to do it. sequencing, with namespace sequencing, um, and we can also sequence devices. I don't have a device in this patch, let's throw it in. Uh, here's analog drums, um, it'd be nice to get some beats, add that to my mixer, and the important thing is we want to be looking at the scripting name, because this is how it's going to appear on my list, and the default doesn't really tell us huge amounts. Because there's an instrument, I can also send it uh, note messages, um, and it's going to essentially give it MIDI notes. There's a whole range of different um, things available in JibberWorky, uh, a lot of them derived from uh, the Jibber Live coding environment uh, for doing um, uh, tonal theory and, uh, and things like that. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple now, but it does mean that we can actually use note names. Um, just like before, um, but there's also some uh, operators that are fun to use for generating different kinds of patterns. I'm going to use the Euclidean Rhythm Generator uh, with a 5 and 8. You can see it's created this more interesting rhythm. Let's uh, also do a kick drum with the same basis. Let's call this Euclid uh, 3A. I'll call this kick. Put some hats in there. Oh, this snare is actually hitting on the down. I'm going to shift that by one. So I can just 
Different 